All right, let's bring in the GM of the Maple Leafs. We haven't caught up with him in a while. Here he is, Kyle Dubas. How you doing, Kyle? Hey, guys. I'm good. How are you doing? We're doing well. We've um, taken advantage the past, you know, couple days or week or so of, of actually talking about hockey for the first time in a month, month and a half. And we know who you're playing. You know, if and when you come back, you're playing Columbus, best three out of five. I guess we'll start there. How do you like the matchup for your team? Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I don't think we, we haven't really spent a ton of time yet looking so much at the at the matchup precisely. I, I think our focus right now has to be on on our own team and uh, and what we can do to control uh, everything that we do. And and the one thing that I, I think we've we've stressed, uh, Brian, has been that I think there's going to be a massive advantage uh, and, a, and a massive advantage to the teams that come back in. Uh, in, in great physical condition and in great shape and, and um, able to guard against injuries and, and all the other things that are going to uh, crop up as we do something that's unprecedented, which is return right back in into the heat of competition. There's not going to be a long training camp and an eight-game exhibition season and then 82-game regular season schedule. It's going to be right at it. So we're, we're trying to look at all those various things and um, you know, not obsess about uh, Columbus for – for seven weeks, uh, once we get a little bit closer, I think we'll, we'll shift the, the attention to them. They're obviously um, a very, very well-coached and well-managed team and, and have a great identity to them. Uh, so that we, we're uh, certainly not taking them lightly, and we know what, we're to, what we'll be in for in terms of style of play. But I think right now we just really need to focus on, on ourselves and putting ourselves in the best, uh, the best spot to have success. Well, Kalia, talk about those players. Um, maybe give us a sense of where your team is at physically. Like, where are they in the world? Uh, how many guys are in Toronto? How many guys are elsewhere? Will everyone be healthy when you guys come to play? Let's assuming it's around August 1st. Mikheyev, uh, Riley, even Janssen. Where is, where is your roster at? Uh, as, of, as of right now, I mean, we, we've got, uh, we do have guys on the injured reserve. Uh, of those players on the injured reserve, I, I think it, it's uh, it's our expectation, um, Mike, that uh, that uh, Muzzin and, and Mikheyev will, will likely be cleared. They, they can't formally be cleared until they go through that entire return-to-play process, which will include actual practicing and contact and right. so on. So, so they remain on the injured reserve. Um, uh, Janssen will, will not be ready. Uh, he's he's a ways away yet, and it was a, a pretty substantial surgery in this six uh, six month recovery at the time, and that was in mid March. So um, he's still you know three months away, or approximately three months away from um, from us even uh, considering him as eligible. Um, you know, in terms of where the guys are, most of them are making their way back uh, to Toronto. From the sounds, of it. we've got some guys in Europe, some guys in the U.S., but. Uh, we've got a, a lot of players in Canada and a lot of players in Toronto um, already. So, so I think that's, uh, that'll be a positive for, for the players that, uh, that want to take part in, in phase two and volunteer to do so. Kyle, I just want to jump on Mike's uh, question a little bit, just talking about the roster and even roster size. Uh, you know, you see through the playoffs, teams uh, have to rely on their depth because there is injuries. And if you, you know, if you're looking to win 16 games or 19 games or however it's going to work, that, that, you know, you may have to rely on some of your depth. Do you feel like, uh, I know it's being reported at 28 and, and, and maybe as many goaltenders as, as possible, is that enough to make a long run? Or do you is there is there maybe some potential pushback on on having more players at accessible because there's nobody else there's no other leagues to draw on you're just going to have to have your team right there. Yeah, I I don't uh, I wish I I wish I knew the exact answer, uh, Jamie, on all those fronts and because there's really no experience for anybody to draw on. Maybe the the only kind of relevant example would be um, you know whether it's the Canada Cups or the World Cups that have happened prior to the season and in August and September previously where the players would have been off uh, for a long time and then return to those camps and get into those types of competitions right away. Um, and, and maybe the Halinka uh, Gretzky turn, uh, Memorial Tournament that, that happens for, the, for those types of players in the summer, the junior age players. But uh, with regards to going through uh, a Stanley Cup playoffs, uh, there's certainly uh, nothing to uh, reflect back on and see how how it's going to go and how many players we're really going to need. I think the the thing about our depth is that uh, one of the benefits in looking back at the season is that we, we you know what, it certainly wasn't a benefit at the time, but we did have quite a few injuries, just all various freak things to you know Riley, Muzzin, Mikheyev, 
and, and all the way down the list of our, our guys that, that miss time. Uh, and I think we, we know what we can expect from our players and, and uh, that have served in those depth roles. And it's also given us an opportunity to see what someone like Justin Hall can do when doing more, or PR, uh, Pierre Engvall and various different players like that. So I, I think we, we like our depth and are, are happy with it. Um, but I think we're excited to see the team fully healthy again. And, and as it pertains to how many guys we're going to need, uh, I'm sure hopeful that the, the 20 that started, the 20 that finished, I, I mm-hmm. think, as you know, from <laughs> yeah. your time, that's very Good wishful. Luck. You and Mike, that's, that's wishful thinking, and especially when they haven't <laughs> been doing anything for a few months. But uh, I think we'll, you know, if it's, if it's 28 or whatever we have to take with us to, to the hub city, um, you know, I, I'm sure that if there are various issues with it, it seems like, um, nobody's going to want a situation where teams don't have enough players. And, and I, I'm sure that the, the NHL and the NHLPA, as they have throughout this process, will likely find a way to, uh, to make something work. Well, Kyle Dubas, and you mentioned earlier today that Nick Robertson will, will be one of those players that you're intending on, on bringing along for the ride. And I think it's safe to say Nick is the, the most highly touted prospect in the organization. And social media is a star just based on his workouts and, and what he did in Peterborough this year. Uh, what has to happen, though, for him to actually play games? Uh, can you picture him playing games once you get started? Uh, it's, you know, I, I guess the, it's, it's going to depend on how he, how he performs, uh, not so much in this, uh, this phase two, but once we get into the training camp portion of it, Brian, and you know, whatever is is formally decided on the on the exhibition uh, on the exhibition front, I saw yesterday that there was some talk about it being um, being two exhibition games. And once that's all formalized and done, then I think we'll we'll have a bit better uh, of an idea in terms of what will be available for Nick. But uh, and and for all of our players that are that are battling for uh, roster positioning, um, I think once once we have an idea of what that's going to look like, the training camp, how long the training camp is going to be, what type of training camp format we'll get, he'll he'll get an opportunity, as will all of our guys, to show where where they're at, and um, that's the way that that we'll we'll likely base it. If he performs uh, the way that he's capable and shows where he's at, I, I can see him getting opportunity, and if not, I think it'll still be a great experience for him. How do you feel about this 24-team playoff bracket to begin with? Like, just in general, Kyle, how do you feel about, you know, this this being the determining, um, you know, factor in the end, that they decided to go with this process as opposed to so many other options? How do you feel about it as, as the GM of a team that was likely going to be in as a top-16 team? Yeah, I uh, I think they, they put a lot of work in into – into it and i just don't think there was a, a perfect way to just decide it and yes i mean we were purely based on playoff odds and and probabilities we were you know we, we were we were looking uh good though on some nights you you wouldn't say that about us uh, and, and lots of people would uh, will remind us that you know we, we did have our ups and downs but purely on the probability standpoint if you look only at the math of it which i, I know has been done over the last couple of days we were our, our odds were very good, and, and now we'll have to play in a series. But I think in the long run, Brian, I think this will be a, a very, very good thing for for our group and for the growth and, and development of our of our group of players and our whole organization. Because if we're if we're going to win uh, the Stanley Cup now, we have to win 19 games rather than 16, and uh, we're going to start off with a with a very difficult uh, opponent that, that that obviously made waves last year in the playoffs and has had a great year. So. Um, I think it's it's going to be very difficult for us. The challenge is is obvious, and it'll provide us with a great chance to grow. So yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if we just were to start off and, and we were to be gifted that uh, that playoff positioning. But I think the the positive for us in this is that it, it it makes the challenge a little bit harder. And I think that's what we need at this time in our in our development as an organization. Uh, Kyle, lots of talk coming out of yesterday about hub cities, and, and we're fascinated for whatever reason where they will hold these two hub cities. Um, the, the, the pitch is led by the organization, so maybe you can just explain to us why the Leafs want to be one of the hub cities. Yeah, I haven't had a whole lot to a whole lot to do with that. Uh, honestly, it's it's been my my task here has been more focusing on our players and our coaches and I've been privy to to a little bit uh, of it I, I just think that um, I think all the teams in the league from from the sounds of it Mike that that have the capacity in terms of practice facilities and and game ranks that can that can handle um, hockey in July and August and 
and then the access to hotels and the various different checkpoints that they were looking for uh, near to the rink and, and security and so on and so forth. It seems like most of those teams did because I think it's, it was probably the, the, the right thing to do um, for the league and, and to try to uh, give give some options during this time. So uh, I, I think, you know, with, without getting too much into it, I think, I think we're uh, in Toronto is a, is a good place just because of the, the various services and the, and the facilities that are available. But whatever is decided there, uh, I think first and foremost, it, it has to be uh, safe, not only for the players and, and for the, um, and for the staffs and the league personnel will have to be there, but, but also for the community and, and that the community will be in, in, a, in a good enough place by that time to be able to host. All right, Kyle, we'll get you out of here by, you know, putting a bow on the regular season because uh, Gary Bettman said yesterday that, that the season is officially over. We're moving into the, the next stage of, of, of hockey here in the NHL. Um, so you look back on it now, you guys played 70 games. There were, ups, there were a lot of ups and downs. It was kind of a soap opera season from my perspective. I can, uh, I, I can only assume it was similar from your, your, your spot. But now that we know that it's officially behind us, uh, what will stick out for you? How, how will you look back on this season five, ten years down the road? Oof. <laughs> a lot happened during the year, Brian. Um, <laughs> I think the thing that I was, I was most uh, happy about was, was the fact that we had a lot of disappointing stretches and, and moments during the year with the way that we performed and, and not just on the ice, but, you know, myself and the coaching staff with Sheldon and so on and so forth. There was, there were times when we were all not really thrilled and happy with ourselves. And the thing that I, I came to like most about the group and, and what we saw, even, even going back to the very last game that we played, like we'd, we'd come off a very disappointing trip to California where we really didn't play well in San Jose. We played well in Los Angeles and couldn't score. And then, you know, we didn't play really well in Anaheim and, uh, you know, we're coming home, uh, after the previous week going to Florida and then and having a great week there and, and then letting our foot off the gas in, in California. And we came home and had Tampa Bay sitting waiting for us. And, and I thought the one thing that the group had showed, whether it was in Tampa Bay after the Carolina game um, with David Ayers and Nets, or the, the stretch in February where we went into Buffalo and Pittsburgh and, and uh, got our butt kicked, uh, especially when we had – dangerous opponents waiting for us in those moments when we were vulnerable and our back was against the wall. The team uh, was beginning to show a real ability to push back and, and buckle down defensively. A lot of those games we, you know, now that the season's over, we can say in a lot of those games we didn't have, I mean, in, in the last few games, we, had, we got Riley back, but there was some of those stretches we didn't have Riley, Muzzin, or CeCe. And uh, I was really proud of the way that the group was able to respond in those moments. Uh, I wish we were never in those positions and we were a little bit more consistent, but I think part of the growth is being able to find your way out of it when things aren't going well. And I thought the group was, was really starting to show that. And I think the, the next step for us is to embrace those obstacles as they come and, and to become uh, much more consistent in our, in our mindset and our day-to-day -day performance. And I think that'll eliminate a lot of the, um, the ups and downs and drama that comes along with it. Always great catching up with you, Kyle. Uh, we'll do it again soon. Thank you for this. Perfect. Okay, thanks, guys. Have a great night.